Good morning everybody. Nations League week is over. And yeah, we have a few more decisions that were done. Let me turn off the wipers on the back. And uh, quite some interesting results. Um, despite me saying yesterday I'm gonna watch Germany play France, I actually in the end decided to go for Bulgaria against uh, playing in Norway simply for the reason that I wanted to see how they are doing and yeah let's start there let's go see CBA uh, was not too great what Bulgaria did uh, Norway was physically imposing and put, no, uh, put Bulgaria in quite some trouble early on I think within 20, 20, 20 minutes they should have had two goals and then at a time when Bulgaria seemingly got a few things together you you, you can see that maybe skill wise Bulgaria is a little bit uh, better but they were too imprecise honestly and the athletic part was all on the side of Norway uh, and they always had the feeling what uh, concerned me, me the most whenever the ball got in the box whenever there was a cross hardly ever did a Bulgarian defender clear it or it seemed safe there was always a Norwegian popping up from somewhere and that of course um, is a recipe for disaster and yeah disaster struck right when I thought that yeah maybe uh, Bulgaria got away lucky Norway scored and uh, it was well deserved at that point. I probably should have added a second even before half time. Uh, the second half, same old, same old, to be honest. There was not much that uh, got better. Maybe the game was a little bit more quiet. Bulgaria tried, but really couldn't piece together any reasonable attack. I think that one or two shots. Uh, I think I can remember one by Popov, which was actually kind of weak, and then Despotov did something. But it was all... The game was dominated by Norway, and Norway should have added a second. I mean, there was one uh, chance where King had an uh, empty net in front of him, and the ball was headed to him, and he, he just botched it. It didn't go in. And that was actually vital. Uh, for Bulgaria because um, if they would have lost 2-0 then they had to head to head against Norway they would have lost so it's a tie in the head to head and it's not down to goal difference although there Norway also looks better I think it's a 4-1 versus 5-3 something like that um, in favor of Norway so Norway has plus 3 and Bulgaria has plus 2 uh, Norway won by 2 goals against Cyprus so yeah, uh, I think after what I say, said so yesterday and already remembering that the first game uh, between Bulgaria and Norway was kind of more towards Norway, but Bulgaria got the goal. I have to say Norway is probably the team that comes out of this group. I don't trust Bulgaria and Cyprus unfortunately. I gotta be, I gotta be uh, honest. Uh, they already had trouble at home. I, why would they uh, have it easier on the away? Uh, I think the other good thing for Bulgaria, and I'm talking about Bulgaria, my wife's uh, home country. Uh, the uh, the only other thing that's going for them is that uh, Cyprus and uh, Slovenia played a one-one draw, so that basically relieves them from being relegated more or less still well, let's see Slovenia has now I think Slovenia had had one point I think yeah that does it and you know yeah with the third place but I think Bulgaria at least uh, will surely stay in C but of course you want to go B and for that you gotta now pull out two victories and do something with the goal differential so that was the League C matchup. Um, I actually have a plan of maybe going through League D and everything that's going on there because there were quite some interesting things. Gibraltar pulled out two victories this weekend. Uh, or, 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 or this week. This is, 
I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, so there is quite some stuff going on in League D that I think deserves uh, its own episode. And I'm probably gonna do this, uh, if not tomorrow, then on Friday morning. So yeah, we, uh, we have that one. Then let's move to uh, League B, where I think the clash, the most interesting clash was probably between Ireland and Wales. A uh, very young Welsh team just beat Ireland. I think one, it was 1-0. Yeah, I think 1-0. Ireland doesn't look good. And the Wales played without Ramsey, without Bale. And more or less had the better of um, Ireland for most parts of the game. I think at the beginning uh, Ireland had a few chances, but other than that, I think it was all Wales and there was not much coming. Uh, of course, I like that the Irish goalkeeper at the end tried to get something going, but yeah. Doesn't look too well for Ireland, I gotta say. And so we're looking at Ireland most likely being relegated there. Um, it's down between Wales and uh, Denmark, which is, I think, the next game played in Wales. Uh, and then Denmark has a game in hand against Ireland. So yeah, um, that favors the Danish, clearly. So probably Denmark go up, uh, Wales staying put, and Ireland going down. And then the other one, uh, was Ukraine against the Czech Republic and Ukraine has been uh, I don't want to say dominating this group I mean they won the Czech Republic fair and square uh, but I think it was a last minute win as far as I can remember and they, in the game again at home against Slovakia I saw that game it was kind of you know a so and so game nothing really exciting they got a penalty and that was converted to them that was the win and then with the Czech Republic beating Slovakia that actually opened now the door wide for Ukraine because a win would secure promotion and the Czechs got off to a decent start but soon it was all Ukraine and Ukraine got a really really pretty winning goal and won this one against the Czechs who now uh, yeah, I think the second game between Czechoslovakia and uh, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> uh, the Czechia and Slovakia will decide who will uh, get uh, relegated. And yeah, Slovakia has a game in hand against um, Ukraine, which yeah, Ukraine probably can rest some starters, so maybe this will also play in Slovakia's favor a little bit. But we gotta see how that was playing out. But yeah, we have the first promoted team in the Ukraine. Uh, maybe a little bit surprising, but then uh, I think Ukraine is always kind of teetering on the edge of being at a big tournament. So I can see them being there. And yeah, let's, before we go to the big one, Let's talk Jersey matchups. Uh, I didn't see actually Slovenia against Cyprus. Um, Bulgaria against Norway was all right, all, uh, except I liked the Norwegian um, home shirt. It was a little bit weird to see it with dark blue pants. I think white pants would look better with, in that, with that outfit. Um, and the white pants were with Bulgaria, which then looks super boring. Uh, they look in all white and then with the red socks. Even with the dark blue pants, I think Bulgaria could have played and it would have been a really uh, visually pleasing matchup. As I said, put the white pants on Norway, I think this would look much better and then give the green pants to Bulgaria and we have a really really nice looking matchup. Um, Wales against Ireland, uh, we, nothing that I can complain about. Uh, Ireland played in their wonderful green jerseys, they are really so bright green, uh, it's actually a beauty to watch. And Wales in all red, I think it's all right. I wonder why Wales, uh, why when they played uh, in Wales that Ireland actually uh, was wearing the white jersey, which also looked nice to be, uh, to be honest. And I know the Czechs are going for this new look with the red 
shirts and the blue pants I'm just not quite that used to that I think it would be better if they go red white blue I think this is a more of a check look to me um, I remember the first time I saw that look was at the 2006 World Cup when the Czechs played Ghana and actually back then I liked this the red with the blue pants there is something to it but to be honest, if you look at the Czech flag, blue is the triangle. It's white, red, and then the triangular red, white. I think it's white, white on top, red, and then you have the blue triangle. And that, of course, means that the blue is an accent color, and therefore I think it would look better with white pants. Uh, I don't want to see the Czechs in all red. That I also have to see and Ukraine in yellow so yeah it was a colorful match, match but uh, it was just something about the Czech kit that didn't 100% look right let's put it that way um, gotta say it like that well what I'm talking so much about the Czechs the Bulgarians the Ukrainians and so on when everyone in the world is of course was looking to Paris France against Germany. Um, by now you probably know, know, know the result if you look closely. I'm wearing a France jersey, so meaning France did not lose, no France won. And the big question of course is how did the Germans do? Uh, was it an improvement? And I think we can, uh, let's quickly summarize the match. I watched two highlights, so I think I have a good grasp of how, how the match was going. Uh, of course, the French came out a little bit um, with energy. Mbappé running wild with the German defense, which was reformed. I think Germany made five changes, uh, which is a biggie, uh, to be honest. But I guess uh, this was something that Yogi Löw needed to do. I think the task at the moment is to get the team, the young players, get the young players going, not have and not rely on the old guard. I think this is what definitely needs to be the task of the German coach at the moment. And the talents are there. I mean, we saw it in um, Russia in 2017. They, they rolled over the, uh, the field, more or less, not rolled over, but you know, they dominated, so they, the talent is there. Uh, and you need to get a little bit out of the funk. But you know, after the initial dominance by France, or not dominance, but you know, chance, uh, they had more initiative. The Germans actually composed themselves, uh, was one uh, counter-attack that they ran, and uh, soon thereafter, a handball Sora in the box. Very, very soft penalty, I gotta say. I mean, uh, the French defender is lying on the floor, having the hand, and the shot goes right at here. Personally, I feel it's, it's a very debatable penalty. Uh, if the Spain is, if Spain didn't get a penalty yes, uh, the day before, I don't know why um, Germany is getting that penalty. But you know, it's not consistent all through. But yeah, so we had penalty, Cruz uh, steps up and converts. Joris had his hand on the ball but couldn't save it. Uh, and that kind of relieved the Germans, who were then, for the most part, the better team in the first half. Um, they had a few more chances. Um, I think one was uh, Sané uh, was the one who, who got the penalty. They, you know, I don't remember it now, but I, I, I recall that there were two or three opportunities for, for, for the Germans to get an even better result. Uh, after the first half, of course, at the end of the half, Ross came back a little, but it ended 1-0 well, at halftime for Germany. And things seem to go on the up, but, you know, don't tease the lion in the lion's den. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, Mbappé well, had 
probably a good first half, but seemingly the Germans made some adjustments, um, maybe even got a little bit more uh, defensive because they expected the onslaught coming from uh, France and France came and France tried to take the game to Germany and because you know as world champions you don't want to lose at home it's as simple as that and they got their equalizer through Griezmann uh, with a header after a really really powerful cross and a powerful uh, looping header kind of in the corner was very well taken and uh, teams are level the game was a little bit more open um, and then France was also gifted the penalty it's kind of you know it's one one in injustices the, it was not a follow Matuidi I think Matuidi uh, fell down yes the leg was there but uh, this was even honestly this was less a penalty than the one uh, that uh, Germany got because that was at least uh, if this was the World Cup and reviewed I'm sure that penalty would have been given uh, I'm not so sure about this one but yeah penalty given Griezmann steps up makes it 2-1 and again scores two goals against Germany as he did in 2016 and France hangs on Wins is now on top of the group and uh, Germany has one point from the first game and is in trouble. If the Netherlands win in uh, France, they are already relegated and even if they just get a po uh, if the Netherlands win at home against France, they are already relegated and even if the Dutch um, just get a draw against France, they look good because they have a 3 0 advantage over uh, Germany. So, Germany needs to beat them by at least three, uh, by three goals and then hope that the French did some damage to the. That won't happen. I mean, uh, they are now plus two. The Netherlands, the Dutch, uh, they would be minus one. Let's go through it. The Germans are now. Minus four. It's not gonna be easy. Uh, Germany needs to hope that the uh, Netherlands lose to France. It's that simple. Other than that, you need a miracle against the Netherlands, which is not entirely out of the question, but I don't see it coming. Uh, but you know, I didn't see England leading 3 0 at halftime against Spain coming either. Uh, what's more concerning is. Uh, it's you know six losses in one year for a German national team that never happened before. Uh, that's a big disappointment, obviously. Uh, and you saw it slowly coming at the beginning of the year. You remember Spain outclassed, but they hang on to one one. Then with kind of a reserve squad, which now looks actually kind of a decent squad. They lost 1-0 to Brazil, was not a big deal, but then losing to Austria was already, hmm, that doesn't work well. Um, although that was exactly the point in the preparation where the Germans just uh, always have a shaky result. And then uh, two losses at the World Cup, now two more in the Nations League. I don't know, I don't know, this is a horrible year for Germany and I still, I know many people call for Löw's job and maybe Löw will step down by the end of the year himself, uh, it could happen. Honestly, I still don't trust him. I still have trust that he gets this, uh, gets it right. Um, it's one down year after many, 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 many big years and this is the unfair part of the business. That yes, expectations are not bad. Even if you go down in B, I think this is a it's not the worst thing in my in my thinking. Because you can you get some still good level of opponents, but that you can beat and you can build some self-confidence for a younger squad. I think it's all over. Now, uh, 
uh, looking for the final four, I personally think France will go to the final four. Uh, I actually think the final four will be uh, Portugal, Spain, France, and uh, what's the other group? Belgium. I think that will be the final four. Uh, of course, it can be a surprise result uh, here, here and there, but I don't see it. Um, I think France will get the point in the Netherlands that they need. They are the better side, although the Dutch, maybe they're getting somewhere, maybe. I really hope that maybe we'll see a good Dutch team again, because honestly, two tournaments in, 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 in a row without any orange, uh, that's not the fun that I want to have. I think just from the colors, I'm, I was really missing orange at Euro 2016 and uh, of course the last World Cup. Yeah, so well, that's where we stand in the Nations League, at least for Leagues A, B and C. Let's go quickly through League B, who, I mean, relegation, we know already Paul is relegated from A, they will probably get uh, Iceland, potentially Croatia um, and Germany. I think that's where it's going, uh, but it's not all said, I just don't, I mean the group, Croatia still can win the group, Croatia pulls out two victories uh, in the last two games, they win the group, and that with a 0-6 um, thrashing at the hands of Spain, this is the crazy part of both groups of three, and I'm of course interested in how Germany will proceed from here. We had also a few interesting friendlies and you know I don't pay much attention to friendlies but yesterday there was kind of a plethora of them and some of them were bigger names than the actual games. Of course France Germany is hard to beat but there was Brazil against Argentina where a reformed Argentinian team uh, actually gave Brazil quite the battle. Uh, Brazil wins it in stoppage time, but I think it was an even contest and uh, they were celebrating Brazil. I mean, yes, you win against Argentina, was played in Saudi Arabia. Don't get me started on that one, uh, but I guess it's better to play in Saudi Arabia than uh, playing at home in South America. It's just because of the time difference and the, the players are playing at the big clubs and there will be a lot of money involved. Uh, another one, since we talk about the Netherlands, the Belgium played against the Netherlands and actually um, Belgium got a beautiful first goal uh, by Mertens and the Dutch equalized a wonderful counter, counter attack and then it was an open game up and down, either side could, could have won, it stayed 1-1, uh, but yeah, maybe the low countries are both now getting back. I mean, if the Dutch get back and we have actually Belgium anyway on, on top of the world at the moment, that could be really, that, that would be exciting because I think both teams kind of stand meanwhile for a brand of exciting soccer, although Belgium is more exciting to watch than the Dutch at the moment. I think we, we don't need to uh, talk around that. Um, it was interesting to see the Dutch playing with their light blue uh, away jerseys and, uh, dark, and kind of dark blue pants, which looked odd, to say the least. Um, because there's no orange in there. At least if you have such jerseys, give, make the lion orange, make something orange. I mean, this, I don't like the kit. I don't. I, I think it's an opportunity. Missed. I know the Dutch had away kits prior where they didn't have any orange in there. I remember the 2006 and the 2010 away kits that had kind of the Dutch flag colors. Also, I think in 2013 they had a similar with which was white, and then um, they have somehow the Dutch flag in there with the with the blue and the red. Uh, Over nice looking kits. So yeah, maybe you don't need the orange, but I think if you go for light blue. And then a dark blue accent, I think it should be orange. Uh, there, I cannot excuse that. Uh, if you have the Dutch flag on there on a white jersey, I think I can live with it. I think this is, uh, then you have at least some Dutch identity on there. But the light blue, mm, not so much, not so much. Also that 
Argentina played, you know, Argentina against Brazil is always our, our Argentina more or less in a white kit and Brazil with yellow and blue. Yeah, okay. And I still don't get why is not France playing all the time in all navy. I love their navy shirts, but give me white pants and red socks and then the Germans don't need to play in all white. That was also, uh, I anticipated that again. And, that was almost the reason why I didn't watch the game. The other reason why I did not watch it was because they disappointed me so much the first time around. But this was a better game for what I heard, so you know, I'm the loser in this case. Well, I think that's pretty much it for now for my roundup. As I said, I'm gonna do a League D roundup because I really wanna shed some light on those uh, on the lowest level because it's really interesting and one of those teams will get a spot at the Euro 2020 and that's gonna be interesting which team but there's a lot of things happening I think the, uh, the league D if you're if you can get past the fact that those are the smallest teams uh, in Europe I think there's a lot of excitement in there I really like I really 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 uh, like watching those results uh, I haven't watched many highlights though but there is quite some stuff happening that um, is surely interesting. And I don't know, uh, Gibraltar against Liechtenstein matchup, that sounds just like what, what those nations did, that makes me excited. Well, let me know what you thought about the Nations League week, about the results yesterday, where do you see Germany go, where do you see all the other nations go, who do you think will get promotion, relegation, share it with me. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. I have another short video this evening, one with a very personal story attached to it. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye.